Hey gang, it's Paul with Studpack. Welcome back to the channel. We are back here on our main remodel project and we only have two more videos on this project that we're going to share with you. We're going to have the one you're watching right now and the last video is going to be a final reveal with walkthroughs of before and after. We've kind of dropped the ball in the past on sharing with you all the details and the before and after pictures. We're going to make sure we do that this time on this project. I'll take responsibility for that. It's all right. Now, just like on any project, when you get to the end, you have a pretty long list of things to do. Some small, some big. And we have a list just like that. So we're going to start knocking out each detail one by one. Let's get started. All right, the first thing on our list, appliances. Like we said, she's moving in next week and we have to get this kitchen functional. We have a sink that works. We reuse the old dishwasher. It's not old, it's really brand new. So we put it back in the opening. So we need to go get a range and a fridge. They're actually in stock a few miles from here and it's first come, first serve. So what are we doing here, bud? Let's get in the truck and go get them. Okay, well, you're obviously gonna hit your mirror on the left side, so you gotta pull that in, nice. And then get as far left as you can. Yeah, you'll be all right. Keep going left. Oh my God. You're good, keep going. Take the front door off. All right, again, we got the refrigerator and the range unloaded safely. And I know, I know, never put a refrigerator on its back. It's bad for the compressor. If it was only for a few seconds, it'll be fine. So I already got the ice maker hose hooked up, simply quarter inch compression on each end, and I've already purged this to make sure there's no trash in the line. So let's cut all the plastic off, get this thing plugged in and start making some ice. All right, the refrigerator's in place. That was pretty simple. Hopefully we'll have ice tomorrow morning. I can't wait to have some ice here at the job site. Our next step is to put the range in. But before we do that, we have a problem with this hood we have to address, because I don't want to be working over the range while I'm working on the hood. So check it out. So I've installed big old captive air hoods in restaurants all the way down to a little 30 inch wide hood like this. And this one was pretty simple to install. There's a little bracket that we attach to our blocking that we put in during the rough framing. The hood simply hangs on that bracket. We ran our duct work, ran our cord up in the attic, and plugged it in. Our issue is with the duct covers, the chimney covers, these two decorative pieces right here. Here's our issue. I'm gonna pull this apart. Here's the bottom one. It's easy. It simply keys into the top of the hood and a little screw goes right here to fasten it to the top of the hood. The top chimney is designed to go in this position and it cooks on a bracket on the wall, just like that. Then you lift it up and you're supposed to put a screw right here. Am I lined up, Jordan? Yep. Looks like it, but check it out. I can't get to that bracket because the crown molding is in the way. So I need a way to secure this to the ceiling and also keep it square. I don't, want, I don't want it up there like this or like that. I want it nice and square. So what did I do? I had an old LVL outside and I cut it into this shape. Pretty cool, huh? Now check it out. It's gonna fit inside the inner chimney, the one that goes to the ceiling, just like that. We'll put a screw here and a screw here. We're gonna put these together. Jordan's gonna be downstairs. He's gonna push it up to the ceiling. I'm gonna go in the attic, run a drywall screw, two here and two here, through the ceiling drywall into that block. And that's gonna capture the block. If anybody ever needs to work on the hood from downstairs, they can remove these two screws. This will slide down and everybody's happy. So let's get started by going outside and drilling a couple of holes in this stainless steel chimney. All right, do your, do the, your left, my right first. 
the side near the back door? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm ready. All right, here we go. Oh. Yep. Okay. It's just spinning. Okay, well, I heard it go through. I must have missed the back. I'm going to move a little closer towards the kitchen sink with it. No, you got it. You just split it. I split the LVL? Yeah. Was I close to the edge? Yeah. Okay. I'll come back a little bit. Okay. Okay. Stop. Whew, that feels good. <laughs> it's still spinning, bud. And how can it split an LVL? Okay, stop. All right, other side. Okay. Nice. Are we good? Yup. Leave it alone? Yeah, absolutely. All right. You guys saw me pulling on the chimney with this stud finder right here. That was just so we could get the chimney up against the crown nice and tight, reduce our gappage. All right, that wasn't too bad. A little cloudy outside, so the attic wasn't as hot and it looks great. Now, when I was in the attic, I happened to look down inside the duct. We haven't vented it through the roof yet because we have a whole other problem there. But I looked down the vent and only half the damper was opening. The other half was being blocked by the seam in our piece of ductwork. So I'm so glad I checked that out. We fixed it. Now we have 100% airflow. Now it's time to hook up the range. It's a simple matter of plugging it into the wall, hooking up our gas line. We can fire it up, grill some steaks. Let's get going. All right, the range is in and it looks fantastic. We turned the main gas valve on to this unit in the attic. Now where we live, our inspectors are actually gonna pull this range out. If it's an all electric range, they're gonna check to make sure you put in the anti-tip bracket, which of course we did. On a gas range, they're also checking for that bracket, but the main thing they're looking for back there, this is a flare fitting. They don't wanna see any pipe thread tape or pipe thread sealant on the flare side. You can put it on this side where it connects to the pipe but they don't want to see it at all over there. It's against the code and they'll make you pull it all out and change it and make sure it's all clean. Now the hood is all finished on the downstairs part right here, but we have one more thing to do in the attic. We have to extend the duct work for the exhaust fan through the roof. There's already a penetration in the roof from the old hood. We just have to put an elbow on there and a short piece of duct and make it work. Let's get our tools together, head up in that attic and finish this project. All right, gang, here we are up in the attic. Let me give you a little tour. Here's our six inch metal duct coming straight up from the hood. Check it out, here's our flexible gas line that our plumbers ran. It's tied in all the way back there to a one inch line. And this is basically the same as three quarter inch pipe. Here's a receptacle for our hood, it's plugged in right there. And look at this, Father's Day present from Jordan, a nice Milwaukee cordless fan. It makes a huge difference up here in these attics. And for lighting on the project, we've got our Klein light right there. This thing is awesome. I'll make sure we put a link for that and the Milwaukee fan in the description below. But here's our first issue. The old duct wasn't even going out through this completely. Either the roofer missed the hole or, or somebody missed something because you can see there's only a little bit showing right here and we wanna have full airflow. So I'm gonna use this as a template, scribe the bottom of that, get my jigsaw and cut this out and then we're ready to install our ductwork. So let me grab a pencil, we'll mark that sheathing and cut it open. Now, before I made that cut, I made sure the blade was short enough and it wouldn't poke a hole in our screen right there. Now, usually when we put in kitchen exhaust fans like this, I have a tool that'll put a crimp on this, just like this factory crimp here, that will allow this 90 to go over this pipe. We had a few comments, check this out. They said it's actually better to do it this way. You put it like that. That way, any grease that gets on the ductwork from the inside can go all the way down to the little grease cup that's on the fan motor all the way at the bottom. If you put it the other way, the grease is gonna get caught in here. So we're actually gonna do it that way and try it out, huh, Jordan? Yep. So let's put that there. I'm gonna grab a tape measure and get a measurement through the roof to my fitting. All right, I'm 29 and three quarter. 
I need a little bit to go inside of here, a little bit for a tab up there. Let's go 32, bud. Let's cut this at 32. Finish this up and get out of here. I hear it raining, so it's a little cooler, huh? I love these cutters. Aren't they a lot easier than the conventional type? You can see me not struggling, right? Weiss M-41Rs. We'll put a link in the description for these as well. All right, let's fit this up and get out of here. Oh, wrong piece. <laughs> Oh man, there's a little tip on how to get this backing paper off. Sometimes it's pretty difficult in these attics. Don't cut all the way through with the scissors. You're gonna leave it like that. It's gonna leave you a little tag. See that? I may not be able to get it with my gloves. All right guys, that was pretty simple. Let's pack up and get out of here. The next item on our list is under cabinet lighting to highlight this beautiful quartz counter. We're gonna use these Halo under cabinet lights. A big shout out to our friends at Halo for sending them to us. And this is their HU 11 series. And they have all the things we love about Halo lighting. They're dimmable, they're linkable, and you can change the color. Let's get this thing installed. So as you can see, it comes with its own connector. So it goes in these little knockouts on these cover plates. You've got one on the right hand end, you've got one in the middle, and you've got one on the left. So no matter where your rough end is coming in from your, from your cabinets, you can go right into your fixture. So just like all the Halo products on this job, it's plug and play. So we're gonna make these connections right here, put this plate back on the back, and check this out. The mounting screws are right here, and they're captive in the fixture. Let me see if I can get that one to come out, Jordan. Here we go, look at that. No fumbling with a screw. We just put it right where we want it and drive that into the bottom of the cabinet. And that's about how long it is. So if you have a half inch bottom, three quarter inch bottom, it's not gonna poke through. Yeah, a lot of times you gotta remove the lens and a big long cover right. and, and you're under here working like that, but I can do the whole thing almost standing up. All right, that's all done. Under cabinet lighting is installed. We can't turn them on yet because we have to put in the dimmer, but we wanted to show you a few features about these lights. They come in different sizes, nine, 18, 24, 36, and 48. And if none of those work for you, it comes with a linkable connector like this, and you can design your own system however long you want. Right on. It also comes with this cap. You can take off the switch where you select your color and put this cap on it so that nobody can ever change it. Maybe in a commercial setting or something, guys like you go in the bathrooms and change the lighting. That's right. That's right. So I say we head to the other side of this wall and wire up that three gang box with all three dimmers and get this side of the room done. Dining. Yep. Kitchen. Dude, I don't know if this cover plate is gonna cover this. That is not my work, that was there originally. <laughs> I did change the box, but that was there. This is paneling, I can't patch it. It's gonna be close. Oh man, look at that, 16. Wow. I can move it. Yeah. We got this going on right here from That's the right. old one. All right, we'll put this on just so it's safe mm -hmm. and we'll deal with that later. And you will notice I put a piece of paper here to protect the paint. It's been my experience that these aluminum edges on these dimmers and even the switch with that yoke, that steel yoke, can damage the paint. That's just protecting the paint for me. And the wires when they're sprawling out. And the way. wires, right. Yeah. We're done with that. Let's put this on and move on to the next one. All right, now with the installation of that last dimmer, that pretty much finishes the electrical on this project. But you can probably see right here, we have the receptacle for the microwave. We're still trying to deal with this. We're having a custom cabinet made right here. We, we may need to buy a recessed receptacle, but that's gonna be easy 
and we're just going to check off the electrical. Now I get a lot of comments down below about what kind of bags do I wear? What do I put all my tools in? Well, these are made by Boulder Bag. I've had one of their older versions right here. Check it out. I got this thing like 10 years ago and I finally wore it out. So I reached out to them, said, hey, could you send us a couple of bags? They said, sure, no problem, stud pack. They sent me this nice blue one. And down here on the floor, I got a khaki one. Check it out. And these have a ton of features that's not included on the older bags. Number one, they got these handles. I guess that's to pull me out of a well, Jordan, huh? Probably. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I use them when I'm carrying the bag so everything doesn't fall out of the pouches. And then it's also got a cool bag over here, Velcro enclosure. It's got a little elastic band for your bits. And I can keep my Wagos in there. So huge shout out to Boulder Bag again. Thank you. They sent me these like three months ago, but just like when you buy a new car, you got to test drive it. Well, I've been test driving this and I love them. So we're going to put a link below to their website and they have a separate website where you can order these made in the USA right there in Boulder, Colorado. Love that. And speaking of these Wagos, Wago actually reached out to us also and they sent us this very cool L-Box mini kit full of all different size Wagos. A lot of you have written in the comments below, you gotta try them and have we ever, and we love these things. We also get comments like, are you sure those things are strong enough? Well, check this out. I'm gonna open this lever and I'll put it up here by my mic. You hear that? If that clamps down on your finger, it's over for you. We love these things and they are super strong. Now I'm already reading the comments you guys are gonna leave for us. You guys are selling out. There's too many ads. But Jordan and I honestly wanted to give a big shout out to the companies who are supporting us on our channel. One other company that sent us something is True Position Hardware. They sent us their cabinet hardware jig. They must have seen our video about a year ago, because that's when they sent this to us, where Jordan and I were struggling with a plywood template, putting up handles and knobs in an entire kitchen. And all those templates ended up in the trash. A big shout out to Greg and the team at True Position Tools for this awesome cabinet hardware jig comes in this beautiful case and all the accessories are included and they have optional accessories you can buy also. Even comes with a drill bit, specially designed for these bushings. Now we can put up knobs and handles, even the great big handles with these extensions. It's gonna make it accurate, repeatable, and we can't wait to show you how easy it is to use. The first thing obviously you need is gonna be your handle. This is the one we decided on. And then you need to decide where you're gonna put it on the cabinet door. Now our style, this is a style, is two and five eighths wide. My wife wants it in the middle, so the middle's one and five sixteenths. We also want it one and five sixteenths from the bottom. So now that I know those two numbers, it's just a matter of grabbing our jig and setting the two stops. This hole is fixed, right? It doesn't move. This one moves, this one does not. That's always the bottom hole, just like that. So we're gonna set our side stop first. Loosen that thumb screw. We're gonna put this edge at one and five sixteenths right there on the scale. You see that? Tighten the knob. Now we're gonna set the bottom stop, also at one and five sixteenths. Scale starts at zero right there. And there's one and five sixteenths. Cool, let me lock it down with the thumb screw. And then this one's adjustable as well. And I've already set it for the distance between our two handle screws right there. Now we're ready guys. All we gotta do, put it up there like that, drill these two holes. Again, it comes with a drill bit that's sized for those bushings. It's going to be perfectly straight. Once we do this door, we just flip it over and do the other one. It couldn't be easier. Let's put this in a drill and start mounting some handles. Such a stress reliever. That is fun. All right, it's that easy. Let's do all the doors in the kitchen and then we're gonna show you how that works for the wide handles for the drawers. All right, all the door handles are on and it looks cool. My wife calls this the jewelry of the kitchen. Now that we have all these done, let's start working on the drawers. We have a few different size handles to install. So we're gonna start with the ones that are the same size as the doors. We actually have only three of these to install. Now this is six inches center to center. So I've got my jig. Here's the center. This one's three inches over. And this one's three inches over. This middle hole right here, that's if you're just putting up a knob. So they recommend you put a piece of tape over it just so you don't put a hole where you don't need it like we talked about at the beginning of this segment. So now that this is spaced, we gotta get our height spaced. My drawer fronts are six and seven eighths tall. We're gonna put the handle in the middle half a six and seven eighths, three and seven sixteenths. 
For all our metric friends, there's metric guides on here as well. I've already got it set at three and seven sixteenths. So this is ready to go. Now we have to get it centered on the drawer. How do we do that? It's pretty simple. Check it out. I'm gonna open this up and you simply use a light pencil and make a mark on the top of the drawer. Easily erasable. Then with the notch right there, you line that notch up on your mark and you are ready to go. This acts as a square and I can make up my pencil line, make sure it's square to the front of the drawer and check out this little detail. If you have a shaker style drawer, they have these little thumb screws on the back. So when you put it on there, it's nice and solid. If those weren't there, let me flip it around and see if it'll do it, Jordan. Yeah, if those weren't there, see it bounces around a little bit? But with those screws, nice and solid. All right, those three drawers are done. Now, before we change our setup for the wider handles, let's use this setup to put the pull on this garbage pullout right here. All we have to do is change this setting. What's our width here? Remember, it was two and seven eighths, so I just have to move this down to one and seven sixteenths. I'm ready to go. I've already got the center right there. It's just a matter of lining up the notch. Now, because I have these screws to accommodate the shaker panel, I'm just gonna spin it around. They don't have to move them. They've got a notch on both sides. Now, before we go to the wider handles, I forgot about these four drawers right here. They get the same six inch handle, but obviously they are taller. And we're gonna put the handle in the middle. Some people like to pull them up higher. It's whatever you like. This is 10 and three quarters. I set my guide to five and three eighths. We're ready to go. All right, all the kitchen poles are on and we got one more thing to do. The owners asked us if we wouldn't mind spraying the coat of paint in the laundry room, which is outside. Kind of weird out here, huh? You all ready for me, Josh? I put Josh on it. Let's see if he got it done. Yep, I got the whole room ready to spray and I even got the sprayer ready for you. Wow, with my favorite tip, you're awesome. <laughs> See you later. All right, the inside of the laundry room, one fresh coat of Swiss coffee semi-gloss looks epic. It really freshens it up. Check this out. We already got a little Louisiana bug right there. I wonder if that's the one that was in my mask that I was spitting out. Let me turn off this light, kind of close this door, and we'll head back inside. Well, that was a lot of little stuff done. You know how it piles up at the end of the project, but we had a great day today, Jordan, didn't we? That's right. We do have a few other things to do. We have some custom cabinets being built, but for the most part, this project is done. Today's Thursday. She's actually moving in Tuesday, right? That's right. She can cook. Both bathrooms are 100% done and all the bedrooms are 100% done. Even got smoke detectors and a carbon monoxide detector. Now we could show before and afters of this project, you know, all the little details. If that's something you'd like to see, let us know down below in the comments and we'll be sure to come back here and shoot that video later on when all the cabinets are in place, all the crown is done and even the hardware on the exterior doors. And we got some shutters to build, right? We do, but for some reason, and maybe they can drop it down in the comments, whenever we get to the end of a project, <laughs> It's like not as interesting, right? so that's why we usually don't film videos when we get to this stage in the project because yeah. we'd rather just put the handles up and yada 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 yeah. and uh, move on to the fun stuff. So yeah. We're on to the next one and I think so are they. And then we are announcing our newest and last project in Louisiana right? Um, in about a week as well. Something we've never done before. Right. For one of my best friends, it's going to be crazy fun. Right? It's going to be so much fun. It is. I imagine when we start working on your house, we're probably going to be posting every day, huh? Right. Come on, Dad, three let's go. Yeah, let's three go. to four days a week at least, so I'd it'll be a lot of fun. That. I'd love that. Me Can't too. wait. Yeah, we hate not making videos for eight or nine days. We right. just want to walk outside and build a house and film it. And that's what we're going to do. Exactly right. All right, so if you enjoyed the video, smash that like button for us, ask a question, drop a comment, and please subscribe, and we'll see you on our next Stud Pack video.